Get real. Could it be that it's really true that as President of the United States, leader of the free world, chief magistrate, commander in chief, occupant of the Oval Office, there is a rapist, a serial rapist, a war criminal and a psychopathic liar. Get real. Uh, do you think that somebody like Rudy Giuliani, who is more of a secular candidate than, say, Mitt Romney, is going to have a leg up in the Republican primary because of this change of zeitgeist that you speak of? Well, it's actually, at the moment, I have to say, it seems to be having the opposite effect. Uh, the Democratic candidates are all pretending to be as pious as they possibly can be. You see Mrs. Clinton looking like a dog being washed. You see Mrs. Clinton looking like a dog being washed and talking about how her faith got her through the impeachment crisis with her husband. People forget, of course, that it was Billy Graham and Jesse Jackson who got Clinton through that crisis by making him allow, make, allowing him to pretend that he too was a person of faith. It's really is, it's sordid. I think actually the Democrats are making a mistake by doing this because I think people who genuinely are faithful um, in their hearts don't like to see religious hypocrisy, they don't like people, people pretending to be more pious So you think Hillary are. Clinton is pretending? to be religious? You think Barack Obama's pretending to be religious? It can't be that she suddenly decides that, that she's a person of faith. She's never particularly mentioned it before. Um, and all the Democrats seem to have concluded from the last midterms that, <coughs> excuse me, from the last midterms that uh, the finding is that it goes down well if you play to what are called the values voters, and that's a code word for the evangelicals. It's, you, it's so obvious. You can see, as with everything Mrs. Clinton does, in fact, you can see the machinery working. You can see the wheels turning inside her head as she makes her maneuvers. Well, you know, Barack Obama and uh, John Edwards also talking about Jesus. Well, actually, I know the Senator Edwards slightly, and uh, <coughs> I'm sorry, I've got the frog in my throat. I know the Senator slightly, and I think he actually he does have a genuine, rather uncomplicated faith. And I gather that Mr. Obama's been going to some a rather rock and roll ethnic church um, in Chicago for some time. So for all I know, he believes that stuff. But I mean, if he does, then so much the worse. Get real. Perhaps I could put it like that. Anyway, I, I mean, this argument's going to have to be had, and this generation would have had to have it without, I think, without Iraq. Because the concept of the just war has to be fought over again in every yes. epoch, true. in my opinion. Thank you for those very thoughtful answers. Any other well, questions? Well, and not to say voluminous. <laughs> hey, we want one. Exhausting. <laughs> Exhausting. Big fan of it's beautiful. No. Is there a, a candidate you support? No, I, I'm really, really, really no, not. I, I'm, I'm really, really, really not. I, I'm, I'm as, as much happy as disgusted and enraged by the, the terrible uh, narcissism over Bosnia and what it conceals, which is her, her own role in making that such a big disaster and such a I hope that that has completely ruled her out as even thinkable president. I States. hope that that has completely ruled her out as even thinkable president. If word for that, I, I would have to say, just not sound of gallantry, the way she has stood up to the sort of pasting she's got lately on the and the sheer willingness to get up every morning and do it again as if nothing would discourage her. Is energy worthy of a better cause? I'd like to think she would have done that to save Bosnia rather than just to use Bosnia uh, and its mass death as a means of advancing her own career. But sometimes you think it's possible to think of her caring about something other than herself. I say that very reluctantly. Well, using an illusion familiar to you, she is an iron lady in her own right. She no, no, no. She's no, no. Iron she's ladies, tough. iron ladies, do not say the boys are ganging up on me. You can't imagine Thatcher trying. Oh, to she was just doing that to be opportunist. No, no, she's done it twice now. But also, I, Thatcher did weep publicly at the memorial meeting, memorial service for the, those who fell in the recovery of the Falkland Islands. But I don't think she ever welled up in any other way. Oh, she did when she was uh, expelled from government. Oh, perhaps she did that. <laughs> yeah. She did. Well, I saw. Well, you would. I saw. I was there. Tia was photographed. Maybe brushing away a fractional. No, no, it was, it was when she was actually no, in, no, in, in the car anymore. on the way out of Downing Street. The, the tear was was brilliantly photographed. It was there. Right. Unwiped. That was that was the night it was all over. That was it. Yeah. The night when she was first voted out, when she was in. Yeah, she didn't believe that. She I was there thought. on the steps. She, she said, "I'll fight off." Thought she'd make it. With the British in the Faubourg Saint Honoré. And I also met in my time, I met Benazir, I met Benazir Bhutto several times. 
I've met Mrs. Indira Gandhi. I did not meet Mrs. Golda Meir or Mrs. Bandaranaika, but the women who really had to put up with male-dominated societies, and, and real male persecution, are not self-pitying and whimpering in this awful way. I think that, no, that, if I was a female or a feminist, either, that, I think, would get me down a lot. You either are as tough as, or you are not. Or as humorous and ironic and determined as. Well, you're not, see, oh, you aren't. Maybe a different side of Can't have that both ways. Deep down, she is tough, and this is all handling. This is show your warm side. I think it's calculated. I think she is tough inside. Well, she is when it comes to her, her own um, interests. Yeah, she is. She's relentless. Yes. Well, I saw her shed a chair for herself in New Hampshire, as did everybody else. What I'd like to know, what I said in my piece, would, is it conceivable that if it was pointed out to her, as it has been, that her telling Clinton, her husband, that her disbarred, perjured, impeached, professional liar husband, <laughs> to stay out of Bosnia in the first place probably cost 200,000 lives. Would that thought make her shed a tear? I'm willing to bet you everything I own that it would not. She could not, it couldn't, it's not conceivable to imagine her shedding a tear for another person. That is what I'm looking for. And I think I've found it. And what it means is she's, she's, she's a psycho. <laughs> she's a psycho. You don't, don't, don't waste my time. But there are people but who are fed up with this, and who are fed up with being told that if they complain about it, they're racist. And Mrs. Clinton is, is faced with a rather tricky task of benefiting from that kind of resentment without um, appearing to do so, if I can put it like that. Get real. Huh. It sounds like you don't believe Hillary Clinton. I've never really believed in her or It sounds her. like no, you don't I believe I've Hillary Clinton. I've never really believed in her or What I'm amazed no, by, I must I'm say, is that I know this actually from bitter experience, including from an attack on my good self, my own person, on your book notes the other day when you, um, when you were questioning the vulgar uh, Dr. Daniel Pipes, that generally speaking, if someone asserts that they are the victims of a conspiracy, or even that they know about a conspiracy, they are accused of being conspiracy theorists and by the mainstream, especially by the liberal mainstream, automatically counted out. And, and it's, you're, you're, you're assumed, if you assert or allege that, to discredit yourself out of your own mouth. Usually people who make allegations of conspiracy say the White House is behind them. The conspiracies, I mean. Get real. Best-selling writer, contrarian, and... A notorious agent provocateur. We turned him loose on the presidential candidates and their spouses, and then we ducked for cover. Have, have you felt any um, pangs of sympathy for her as she's slogged through the end of this campaign with everyone no, keeping score on enough, her? No, she's sorry enough for herself. She has enough tears for her own. She doesn't need mine. Um, if, if I felt that she was doing it on behalf of anyone but herself, I might feel some pity for her. But since it's entirely all about her and she never hesitates to re remind us of that, often with a little moisture to go with, <laughs> I, I don't feel uh, my... my um, my mammalian uh, sweetness. It's like Mrs. Clinton in this respect, or these respects, combination of, of great good fortune in life, great privilege, great luck, and tremendous resentment about it. I think possibly that's the most unattractive form in which prejudice can be met in this country, is the, the rage of the entitled at how they didn't get it all right, handed to them on a skewer with a Gollop of Bernays sauce. None of these people should be president. None of these people should be president. Did Hillary Clinton's character catch up to her in this race, do you think? No, but I think her husband's really did. I mean, very impressive to me now is the number of people who wouldn't listen to me a few years ago, who now couldn't say enough about how cheap and nasty and cynical and brutish and vulgar and crass and coarse crude, nasty, unscrupulous, mendacious. And they think it all happened Fentanyl. in like the yeah. last eight months. Yes, they, yeah. they, it's, and it, I, I just, I try not, I try not to, uh, to jeer or to uh, rub it in to them. Um, I've always thought that this, so saintly. there's nothing tragic about him. He's, he, he just is what he is. Uh, he's a horrible primate. Don't, don't, don't waste my time. It's, oh, yeah, but but you're um, saying this. The idea of change, uh, hang with the idea of let's appoint all the friends of Mark Rich. Remember, we're just about to enter presidential pardon season in the uh, Bush term. And I, by the way, 
thinking ahead a bit, I bet that isn't going to be pretty. I think a lot of people who would otherwise have been indicted for torture and illegality are probably going to uh, be told they can walk. But mm. to remind people at this point of the lowest stage of the Clinton administration, when uh, Eric Holder signed off at the Justice Department on the pardon of this a fugitive, shall we call him financier, uh, who'd also given a, a rather a large loan that didn't seem to have been repaid to one of Hillary Clinton's brothers, uh, who in turn, with the other brother, had gone for a, a walnut monopoly, or was it a hazelnut monopoly, in the Republic of Georgia, odd bits of the Caucasus involved in American foreign policy here, plus donations to the Clinton Library. It builds up and it goes on. This yeah. point. Uh, Mrs. Clinton. Clinton. Mrs. Clinton. Um, well, I can't understand why people think she's owed a Senate seat. Somehow it seems that, after all she's done for us, we ought to find her a place in the Senate. I don't get this at all. What has she done for us except be the um, self-pitying, uh, robotic defendant of someone who is a pathological liar, almost certainly a rapist, and, as I show in the book, a minor war criminal. All she's done is say that it's always someone else's fault. That plus, I suppose, single, very nearly single-handedly took the work of many people over many years to build up a consensus on, on national health coverage and universal health care and just piss it away in a couple of months so that now there's no question in anybody's mind that the health care situation in the United States is much worse than when the Clintons were elected, very much worse, steeply worse, for the, just both for the profession and for the patients because of the takeover of the whole health care business by the HMO racket. Probably one of the greatest single social disasters of the century. I don't see that she gets a Senate seat for that, do you? Get real. Well, if there was some foreign policy experience or brilliance right. that Hillary Clinton had ever shown, maybe we overlook the fact that she and her husband have never met a foreign political donor they don't like and haven't taken from. From the Riyadi family in Indonesia to numerous Chinese uh, donors who, who left the, this country rather than show up for the hearings on it. But I don't know of any such expertise on her part, except her pretense to have been under fire in Bosnia when she had not. This is the couple who openly played the race card on him throughout the election. If it wasn't for the fact that she couldn't refuse her brothers everything, or sorry, anything, couldn't refuse them anything, anything they wanted they seem to have got, including some kind of deal for Mark Rich, all of this might be forgivable, they might, or it might assume a different proportion, uh, David, if it wasn't for the fact that this woman doesn't really have any foreign policy experience worth mentioning. And what, and, what is, and what is memorable about it is pretty bad. Uh, we all remember, or we should, that uh, when Les Aspin uh, had then got the Clinton administration very nearly to do something about the horror in the Balkans that belatedly the Clinton administration did decide to stop, Clinton-Gore administration, they, they delayed it because Hillary said, no, no, don't do it. It will take away attention from my brilliant, wonderful health care program that we all remember so well. At least on health care, she knows enough about the subject to have really changed American health care for the worse in her time. But foreign policy, yet, she, about foreign policy, she doesn't even know that much. But she's respected in the Pentagon. She certainly has Says, a, it's a, true an if you important, say so. name, a, a pertinent, important name on the world stage and That's is true. more hawkish than the president she might serve. It's true that she's got a major name on the world stage. That's true by definition. It's only true that she's respected in the Pentagon if people go around saying so. I'd never heard that before, I must say. On some things, she's more hawkish than the president-elect, yes. Uh, but he, she tends to um, have acquired this reputation in what I'd call an opportunist manner. I mean, who, who really thinks that she felt that strongly about Iraq? She just didn't want to cast her vote don't, the other don't, way. Don't waste my time. It's... Yeah. But you're saying this. That I thought Obama's answer just there was incredibly cheap and evasive. I mean, he was right the first time to say, this woman doesn't in fact have any foreign policy experience, and he could have added, which also came up in the campaign, that the experience she has claimed, such as in Bosnia, was fake, was fabricated. And he could also have added that um, he, she, like his other nominee for the Attorney Generalship, main qualification in politics is being a friend of Mark Rich, which I don't think is change. Well, why do you no, think you made this a Christopher thing to say? Let's, let's, well, why how is that a main qualification? Well, you make it sound like he's, he's not, he's not, he's not have, got his head together. Why would he make this appointment the most the profound best known, appointment the best known, so far? The best known decision, the best known, the best known thing Mr. Holder ever did as a government lawyer, shall we, shall we just say, and the biggest intervention in foreign policy made by Mrs. Clinton were both in, uh, to try and get this crook off in exchange for favors we don't even want to think about. It still divides us as, as between those of us who think that 
a job must be found for Hillary Clinton, that the country would be somehow disgraced if, some, if she wasn't in an important position, and those of us who could do without her. And th neither answer to that question is going to make any difference at all to the way the market performs. The Clinton well, brand. That's what the Secretary, that's what the Secretary of State, that's what the Secretary of State is for. And what you want as president right. is to know your Secretary of State spends all her time hmm working to make sure that your policies stick. With this woman, that can't be said. She's always thinking, first about herself, second about her husband. What about well, her I husband? Trust Barack Barack Obama. Obama. He's playing more than always. yours. Chris. Christopher, that, last that, question that's here. Ne that's never changed. That's never changed, and it's never going to. So he would not That's have, your opinion, nor will, Christopher. Nor will anyone. Well, guess what? Guess who's saying it? That's a very clever thing to say. Shall I ask, would you prefer I uttered your opinion? What a <laughs> fatuous remark. Get real. Christopher. All right, Christopher, well, you, you, you believe she should not take the job if offered? Why? Well, for, look, just, just listen to what Ms. Caputo just told you. M Mrs. Clinton believes she can do a fan dance about this. Maybe I'll consider it, is what she's saying. Now, I think it shouldn't have been offered to her, as you started by saying, but it's even more humiliating for the president-elect if, if he says, will you do it, and she says, actually, I'm perfectly happy where I am, or I'd rather have something else. He's absolutely booked himself this way for hiding to nothing. Uh, she's the woman who played the race card on him in the election several times. She's the woman who many, many, many of us voted not to have to worry about anymore. The Clinton era is over, that's why we're voting for Obama. Um, she's now pushing him around, flirting, huh. fan dancing with him. That's the first thing. Second thing is she shouldn't be offered the job in the first place. Why not? Because there are about five or six uh, financial scandals in her past, all of them related to foreign uh, donors, uh, uh, to her and her husband. The Riyadi family in Indonesia, innumerable people connected to business in China, not an unimportant country on our State Department's periphery or our Treasury's periphery if it comes to that. So, many, many I... dozens of whom fled the country before they would testify, or rather than testify, into the hearings on Clinton fundraising and against, and her brothers, her amazing brothers, um, who tried to get a, a hazelnut monopoly in Georgia with her help and who took loans okay. from Mark Rich and didn't repay them. I got and if you. all of this was if all of this was balanced by a huge foreign policy expertise, okay, maybe conceivably possible. But it isn't. What's the best in the foreign policy position? Which have, uh, she she invented a, be a record for herself about Bosnia. She made herself a laughing stock in the campaign. I it seems Paul. to be made. Yeah, amazing. That's it. Uh, maybe the best reason to give her the job would be my uh, masochistic desire to just torment Mr. Hitchens for another few years. Uh, but <laughs> look, if, in fact, the reporting is accurate, I don't have any reason to doubt it. Uh, the president-elect has seen virtues in, in uh, Senator Clinton that I think Mr. Hitchens has perhaps not seen. Uh, and, and that is the, the person who matters. Uh, should, should she be nominated, I think it's a foregone conclusion that the Senate would confirm her. Even some of the most conservative Republicans in the Senate, like John Kyle, the senator from Arizona, has already praised her. Uh, As has some, Henry Kissinger, some, some, some very, uh, or, or Lawrence Eagleburger, another former Secretary of State. So every, she seems every to have. In the land she's, she's a great idea. She's, excuse me for talking while you're in the Mr. Hitchens. While uh, she certainly has a few who, who, uh, who dislike her, I think the broad consensus is that she would do quite a good job. Now, but, whether she would take that job, whether she wants to leave the uh, Senate, that, that she's she got love. such an incredible platform in terms of her command of the issues, and I think she would be value-add uh, not just to the president, but also to the vice yes. president. I mean, let's not forget Joe Biden uh, has a very deep background in foreign policy, and, and she's also been on the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. So uh, I think she brings an enormous amount to the table. Christopher, if she takes the job, does that end her presidential ambition? No, I mean, I, I actually agree with what Tom Friedman said. It must be very nerve-wracking if you're president to have a Secretary of State who you know is thinking about four years ahead or maybe eight all the time. She never thinks about anything else, never has thought about anything else except the possibility that she might one day be president of the United States. Wasn't even a team player in her own husband's administration. Remember when Les Aspin wanted to do something finally about Sarajevo and the rape of Bosnia, Hillary Clinton said, no, I don't want you intervening. Uh, you'll get in the way of my health care plan, which you remember worked out so brilliantly. Someone who simply cannot think about anything but her, right. her own ego or sometimes uh, her husband's. But who, uh, if Barack Obama does this to himself, you'll never have a minute's peace in foreign Paul. policy. And neither right. will we. And every lobbyist and foreign policy interest group from China to Indonesia will be laughing because they've got, they've got exactly the person they know listens to them. Uh, Paul? You know, I'm a, I'm a pretty keen observer of... Uh, 
of the scene, Larry, and I'm beginning to think that Hitchens is undecided here. I think we're marking him down the undecided category. <laughs> uh, I think Friedman's point is an interesting one. You know, there's a lot to be said for the relationship between the Secretary of State and the President of the United States. But I've never seen a closer relationship than the one between the current President and the current Secretary of State, Condoleezza Rice. Dr. Rice, in fact, once in an odd, kind of creepy Freudian slip, referred to the President as her husband. They're terribly close. And yet, I think most objective observers would say they have pursued a failed foreign policy. So I think, I think Friedman's a brilliant guy, but I think he's kind of overanalyzing the issue of the relationship. And instead, looking at what those debates uh, produced, 22 times they debated against each other, and they actually share a pretty close you worldview. Don't, don't, don't waste my time. It's bullshit. But, but you're saying this election in Arizona? I, I believe you know, the lieutenant governor I, would, just, yeah. would just succeed to the office. The lieutenant yeah. governor just succeeds. Yep. All right, let's get into the four. Christopher, opinions aside, will she be the next secretary of state? Well, by the way, happy birthday. Many happy returns. Thank you. I, Thank I knew there was something I hadn't said. Here, um, here. Uh, well, yesterday, it looked as if she was, and the New York Times started doing all the stuff about her husband's business interests, forgetting all the stuff about their joint previous uh, conflicts of interest. And then today, it looks as if she says, well, maybe I will, maybe I won't. This is not team of rivals. This is not Joris Kearns Goodwin. This is not the Lincoln cabinet. This is much more like uh, President Lincoln wondering, having to wonder, uh, if General McClellan was really on his side or not, and finding out later that he wasn't, because General McClellan decided to run as a pro-slavery Democrat against him, having been so fired think, as having though? been fired as general of the army. So, um, I think it, it makes him look stupid and weak, either way. It means that the, the, the woman, the woman who slandered him through the campaign ha is saying maybe I'll get real. Welcome back to Harbaugh and the Politics Fix. Tonight we're joined by Christopher Hitchens of Vanity Fair and Peter Beinart of Time Magazine, whose cover story, The New New Deal, is out this week. Thank you, Peter, and thank you, Christopher. What do you make of Hillary Clinton as Secretary of State? Mr. Hitchens. Look, this is the woman who played the race card on Barack Obama. This is the woman who, if you were for change that you can believe in, or whichever change it was, you were voting against. Uh, this is the woman whose foreign policy experience consists of making a fool of herself and fabricating a story about Bosnia. Uh, this is the woman who, with her husband, have so many connections, fundraising connections overseas, Indonesia, China. Just look up the, the Senate report on, on their fundraising activities. The people they've pardoned, the amazing brothers of hers who nearly got the, was it the um, nut monopoly in Kazakhstan or something farcical right. like that. Just look it up. It's a ludicrous embarrassment for the president and for the country. Well, why is he talking? Why is he look? We all know that Barack Obama's got a lot of candle power. He's a smart guy. He's politically adept. He won the presidential election as the first African American. He's he's yeah. going over hurdles nobody thought anybody could do. And yet here he is with his biggest news story since his election. Everybody's buzzing about it. Why would he let this toothpaste out of the tube if he's not going to do this thing? Well. He, it's clear from what we've can gleaned that it's, the job is hers if she wants it. Yeah. So it's, 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 it's Clinton redo. Um, not just Rahm Emanuel. Uh, whatever this is, it's not change. Yeah, well, it's let me go to Peter Beiner. Peter, uh, machine. Peter uh, where are you on this? I, I just totally disagree. I mean, I think she'd be very good. Bill Clinton's foreign policy was very good, particularly in the second term. I think its second term of foreign policy was about, about the, some of the four, best four years of foreign policy America has had in a very long time. Well, and that's Hillary okay, but, a, but this is a subordinate position she, she's accepting. Is she, do you think she would fit in a subordinate position? In other words, advocating Barack Obama's I think it would foreign be, policy. Not hers, it would be, his. It would be in her interest for the Obama administration and her secretary of stateship to succeed. And she has a history of when she, she's an incredibly hardworking, very tough, very smart person. She okay. made a success of the senatorship from New York. I think she'd make a success of it, yeah. Well, I probably disagree this with Hitchens on this, but I am very suspicious when John Kyle, a major supporter of the war in Iraq, a complete hawk, a neocon in many ways, complete hawk, supports her for this. Henry Kissinger's come out of the woodwork. He supports yes. her for this. Why do these establishment as conservatives want her? What are they up to? Well, Why do they want uh, her? Don't, I don't, don't know what don't, they don't want. Compare Kissinger, don't compare Kissinger to Kyle. I mean, Kissinger is a critic of the war and a so-called realist and someone who likes leaving. Well, why do they both like want her? They're both Republicans. Why do in, they want her? Place. Because she's a status quo type and they know they can, so to speak, trust her. She's a member of their club. Just a comment on what Peter said a moment ago. If you remember, and, and I'll drag you back to this Bosnia farce that she inflicted on us during the campaign. Actually, when there was pressure on the Clinton administration 
uh, Les Aspin was Secretary of Defense, you remember, the, to do something about Sarajevo, to stop the killing, to prevent the ethnic cleansing, Hillary Clinton moved in hard on her husband and said, don't you do a thing about Bosnia, it'll spoil my wonderful health care plan which should be front and center. You remember how beautifully that worked out, too. I'm not, I'm not sure I think that's an entirely accurate accounting yes, of her role in the Bosnia affair. And, and the reality is that Clinton, albeit very late, the Clinton administration acted very okay. well in Bosnia in 1995. Over okay. her objections. I'm not sure it was over her objections. Yes, I think, in fact, you can't have it both ways. You can't accuse her of being too hawkish and also say attack her for being the dove on Bosnia. Okay, Peter, let's talk drama true. here. Uh, no bomb or drama, that's his nickname, because he doesn't like sideshows. He doesn't even like interesting staff people or colorful staff people like James Carville and, and, and people like Stephanopoulos, they never would make it on his team. He likes quiet, gray-suited people like Axelrod and Pluff. You don't even know what Pluff looks like. He doesn't like personality around him. Why would he bring the two biggest personalities in our lifetime into his cabinet, into his world, where I, anything I, Bill Chris, Clinton does, it's interesting to him? Why does he want I Bill just Clinton disagree. to explain? Wow. Rahm Emanuel is quite a character, and that was his first choice. He's not a quiet, retiring guy. I think Obama likes talent. I think he likes really smart people Why does he want who are drama? ambitious. Why does he want drama? I, I, I think I think he thinks that it's better to have the Clinton the Clintons inside his administration than out. And I think that her he thinks that she will do a very good job, and that her interests and his interests will be basically aligned. As you know, there's a verb missing from what Peter just said. Uh, when people say you want them inside rather than out, there's a, there's a very important word that I can't use on your... I know the word. word but, yes, but the question is this. Sure, but that's, Bill um, Bill that's just, smart, that's uh, just before, we leave, before we leave the Kissinger point, remember, Kissinger had to decline the honor uh, that Bush wanted to give him of being chair of the 9-11 Commission because it would have involved uh, mentioning the names of all the people who he had business dealings with around the world. And he wasn't willing to do that with Kissing Associates. He didn't want to expose his clientele. Okay, the will he accept thing, the deal? You me, the same thing, believe but, you me, is going to come up with the Clinton. Okay, okay. Not, gentlemen, I want to Lynn Sweet, Lynn Sweet in the Chicago newspaper, and sometimes had an interesting question. In fact, she proposed it. If it's about prospective deal-making, he'll accept the fact, whatever it takes to get his wife the Secretary of State job. If we go back into last week, what he did, who paid for his airplane travel to Kuwait, for example, or anything like that, he won't go along with it. Will he accept a prospective deal, Peter, whereby he won't take any money from any foreign leader from now on or foreign interest? Will he accept such a deal? I think so, and I think it would be a good deal. Look, if you believe, as I do, that Hillary Clinton would be a good Secretary of State, I think the best of the group that, are, that have been mentioned out there, then, okay. then I think that's a perfectly acceptable deal to make. I think well, we who's, who's going who's who's to pay for, pay for Bill Clinton's next airplane trip abroad? Peter, you've got to answer that question. Who's going to pay for no, the I next trip be, abroad? Should be, that should be, that, whoever it is, it should be publicly disclosed. I completely agree with you. We'd also oh, like a full disclosed. accounting. And that's We'd good also enough. like a full accounting from all the Chinese and Indonesian uh, yeah. witnesses who were fugitives from justice rather than testify in the last Clinton fundraising hearings. Well, uh, Mark Rich we need to know. We need to know what happened to that I, money I really now. don't think most people besides Chris, with all due respect, are really interested in rehashing all of the scandals of the no, 1990s. No, no, it's a question whether they're all coming back, sir. That's the question. Rehashing or reliving is a bigger question. Do you want to relive them yeah, all? Yeah, and who owes who, who for what? We now need to know. Um, it's a good question. It, it'll, it'll have to come back up. I, come I, back. Don't, I don't really... I don't really think we need to know. I think we need to have a full disclosure about what Bill Clinton does in the future. And I think we have to have a debate about whether we think uh, Hillary Clinton would be good a good point. secretary. Well, I'm going to come back on that point because I think you can make the case that if Bill Clinton's willing to really play ball with this, it might be the smart Lincoln-esque move. We'll be back with Christopher Hitchens and Peter Beinart. The more about the Hillary prospect. Boy, it is the hottest story. But this campaign isn't well, over. Christopher Hitchens and Peter Beinart talk I'll politics here and Hillary Clinton. You know, both of you guys support the war in Iraq, right? Both yep. you guys. Yes. No, let me ask you this. Fair enough. We argued about that. It's, a, it's an, in, an intervention in Iraq. Well, that's I, great. Just like the encouragement of Cambodia. I think I recanted, but I'm... Uh, okay, but, uh, the, the anyway. recanted is, is good, but it's not effective. Let me ask you this uh, about this question. <laughs> when I first heard about this thing, I've been of two minds about this Hillary appointment for Secretary of State. I thought one thing he might be up to is really Machiavellian politics. Not the old thing, keep him in a tent instead of the outside mm -hmm. the tent. But he may have to cut a deal in the Middle East, bringing in Syria, cutting some deal where Syria separates itself strategically from Iran, uh, perhaps Syria separates itself from terrorism, which would be the deal with Israel, giving back the goal line, but getting something like 67, some kind of big deal that makes history and good for everybody. But the only way to do that, if you're going to be a little bit tough on Israel, is to have somebody who's a little bit to your right. You start with this, Christopher, you really know the region. Somebody a little bit to your right, a notch or two to your right on the issue of Middle East politics. Hillary would give him cover in such a deal. Is that the Machiavellian peace here? Well, now you make me think about it. I mean, her speeches in favor of the intervention in Iraq were pretty good because she had followed what her husband and Vice President Gore had been saying and doing about Iraq. She knew in the case that, they, that the Ba'athists were linked to Al-Qaeda, that they were 
uh, dicking around with weapons of mass destruction privately and so on, was a very strong one, stronger than most people still believe. And her vote was a more impressive one for that reason. She's been very, 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 very uncritically pro-Israel, though, uh, at all times. Well, as is that helpful course, to him? Uh, that as has, of course, the president-elect. Does that help him cut a deal that's never going to make everybody happy? We know any Middle East deal is unpleasant, to put it lightly. It's also a security threat. Every deal where you give an inch of territory away makes your security that much more different. In fact, your existence more perilous. So does he help her in that regard if that's what he intends to do, make history in the Middle East? Yeah, Is that the plan? I, also, so. I don't know what the plan could be, Peter, if it's not that. Why else put her aboard? Well, I, I, actually, I actually think that, that he, he may well think that she's a, a very smart, tough, competent person. But I also agree that, it, that you, you make a good point. I think it's probably less relevant with the Palestinians right now because it's simply hard to imagine a deal with Hamas. But vis-a-vis -vis Syria and Iran, you I think there's a reasonable point to make. Uh, well, but they don't, I mean, they're not powerful enough to make a deal with. Uh, okay. but well, Iran, you're you're, you're making Syria. my life troubled here. I'm talking about if you can do the uh, deal, is she the deal maker? That's what I mean. And build I, I the board. I think, I think on Iran, which is the, which is the big plan, Player here, making a deal which would change the regional calculus on Iran and, and end the standoff between the U.S. and Iran since 1979. I think you're right. I think she would help to give political cover. That's also, you, that's also the reason you've had people like Dennis Ross very much in the orbit, because I think yeah, there's a sense that he would Ross be good negotiating the region well, and, he's a little and, tougher. And, good and good at selling it back home. That's well, why I'm surprised to help because you have a mixed mind here, because you don't trust the Clintons, but you are a bit more hawkish than the Clintons. Uh, Christopher, so I'm just wondering why it wouldn't be in your interest to see the Clintons in there because it would move Barack to the right. Maybe. But on the crucial issue, the thing on the crucial issue, Christopher, that we've all been afraid of for years, that, that a, a messianic regime, a fanatical regime, will get hold of apocalyptic weaponry. Yeah. We're now very close to finding out what that's going to feel like. And right. to live with a regime that even if it won't go mad and use them, will be able to use those weapons to blackmail us. Right. Now, both, both um, the senators, uh, Mrs. Clinton and uh, Senator Obama, President-elect, have said that will never happen. Can we come back? Christopher, right. can you come back? We have to, this is too big. We have to come back and talk about this. Thank you, gentlemen. Peter Barnard and Christopher Hitchin. You don't, don't, time, don't waste right? my time. It's bullshit. But, but you're saying this... ...divides us as, as between those of us who think that a job must be found for Hillary Clinton, that the country would be somehow disgraced if, some, if she wasn't in an important position, and those of us who could do without her. And neither answer to that question is going to make any difference at all to the way the market performs. Get real. As for Mrs. Clinton, look, after all she's done for us and all she's suffered on our behalf, she feels she's owed the presidency. And, you know, who could possibly disagree? <laughs> Her life is meaningless if she doesn't get at least a shot. And we can, one can only sympathize. Unless you think, as I do, that uh, people should be distrusted who are running for therapeutic reasons. <laughs> because the presidency doesn't calm those demons, as her husband has already proved. <laughs> but uh, it, uh, look, the reason why we have to think about it, and the reason why your question is a good one, is this. What else can the Democrats do? And if that's the case, what the hell shape are we in? <laughs>